Bula Vinaka and welcome to another episode of Fala Talks. On this week's episode, we're here in the beautiful Waitakere. We're catching up with the legendary Pacific artist himself, Fiji. I'm a little bit nervous, but see how he is. <laughs> Fiji, thank you very much for being on the Fala with us today. It's a pleasure to have you. You've got a legend in the house. No. Or outside. <laughs> um, I just want to read something to you quickly before we start. Uh, and I found this online. This is about you. This is what it says. It says, Fiji is one of the biggest Polynesian artists of our time. His golden voice and musical blends have launched him on the world stage as a pioneer of the Pacific Island sound. A fusion of classic reggae, hip-hop, R&B and jazz set Fiji apart as a performer. Mm. When you hear that, yeah. what's going through your mind? That's what they said. They. I don't feel all that. I feel a responsibility um, to represent the Pacific, not just as a Fijian, but as an indigenous islander, and to sing from the depths of my soul instead of just, you know, another lovey-dovey song. Mm. I really want to address issues of about uh, indigenous people, their rights and their culture and language. And that's that's pretty much going to be my mission, you know, like, to the end of my life. But um, I appreciate all the accolades. Hold that though. So when you do hear those things, or maybe something might come up and you read it, is it just kind of brush off and you're like, that's not what I'm doing it for? It's a bigger yeah. purpose? I can't feed off of that, you know mm. what I'm saying? Um, that's for somebody who wants to become rich in music. Right. You know, they want to be famous and rich and get out there and do unbelievable videos. I'm not a video guy. I've never put out a video in over 20 years. Wow. Um, I'm, I don't feel I have to convince uh, someone. If you don't get the message, then the vision won't make up for it. You know what I mean? So I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to manipulate you into understanding the truth of who we are. I want to be able to express what it is that that I am and I feel as as a kanaka to stand and and sing, you know, from my soul and express myself and do my best to heal a lot of the dysfunction that I came from. You and know? so, where does your love for music come from? Broken family. Wow. Yeah, I'm a child of a broken family. So that's how it happened. And was music just something you went to at a vent or was it a healing thing for you? Both, yeah. First I wanted to yell. I wanted to scream. I decided to just sing. <laughs> One extreme to the other and you chose to sing. Yeah, because it brings peace and harmony, understanding all the great fruits that can help to heal. And so when, you, when you're on stage even now, are you singing from a place where, you know, you were in a broken family and even now at this age, do at you this still age, feel like you're at that place? At this age, it's more about me trying to repair the history that pretty much almost repeated itself over and over with me and my children. And that's where I am at now, is how to heal from that, how to heal yourself to heal from that type of a situation, you know? Um, but I'm grateful um, to music uh, for the life that it has given me um, through the fans, through mm -hmm. the support. And, and that's why I continue to, to sing and write and, and help uh, the younger generation um, I feel it's necessary. I feel it's something that we have to uh, continue um, because, I mean, God forbid that my kids want to sing, but if they do, I want to be able to create enough of an influence for the future environment because it's deteriorating, and um, and and we need it to to stay close to home, you know, to continue uh, with. The, the love and passion and 
caring for one another. A lot of these artists don't really care for each other. Mm. And um, it saddens my heart. I try to stay as open as I can be to, especially the young generation. So, you know, we, we kind of have to whip down some of that discipline that came from our kupuna, mm. you know, um, so that it can continue to flow, you know, representing us instead of the lifestyle of a, an artist. You talk about the kids and you don't really want them to get into it. Is it the way the industry Man, is? Music is not an easy life. It's a pure passion. And it's a lifetime contract if you're serious. So don't get into it if you're not ready, you know. You'll be imprisoned by your own passion or lack thereof, you know what I mean? It's You want to wholeheartedly come into something like music and give it your all. And, and anything less than that is not going to be acceptable. You're, you're going to become a statistic. So does it, does it agitate you to see where music's gone at the moment? People are all about the money or the things yeah. that you get from it? I think I've, I've been around it enough to know that a lot of artists go that way. And, yeah. and, I, and I, I understand it. It's good. You know, you should provide a better life for your family if you, if you can. I encourage it very much. Um, for me, it's um, because our genre of music has not reached that peak yet. It's a constant, you know, commitment and revaluation on, on trying to make sure that um, that we get there, but we get there representing who we are instead of selling out as a product. Um, and going back to your family now, be before you, your family was quite musical. Yeah, my uncle was, uh, he's, a, he's a legend. Mm. My uncle Saki, um, he's a, the man. <laughs> and um, I'm, uh, I'm like, you know, that's my, that's my idol. I mean, the way he was so, he made it look so easy, you know. Um, yeah. And was it that uncle that worked on Elvis Presley's Drum of the Islands? That's my grand uncle, yeah. Right. It's uh, Israeli, Aradule. He, um, he wrote the uh, English version for, uh, actually it interpreted it in English for yeah. Elvis to sing. It was a Fijian song that was sang among the men during the war, the um, Solomon and the Milan campaign. Um, and then uh, what Elvis really liked it. And uh, so my uncle went and turned the, uh, the lyrics from Fiji into English by saying, drums of the islands is beating in my heart. And that's how we got away. You know, and Elvis just loved it. So, but he got, that's, that's what he did. That's his... Uh, big spot right there. Mm -hmm. and that I don't think uh, any other Fijian has accomplished like that to work with Elvis. Huge. You know, the man. <laughs> I remember my mom and them just like, shh, Elvis is singing. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I, was just, I was just about to start something, but yeah. thanks. <laughs> we'll listen to Elvis instead. <laughs> I'm like, he'd he be singing, I remember when he did a, uh, when he did a, uh, there's a sweet, sweet spirit. So I used to go and imitate, you know, Elvis, <laughs> so I could try and impress my mom. I'm, mom, sweet. <laughs> mom, listen, mom. They were like, shh. He used to get the dance moves down as well. <laughs> That's part one of this week's episode for Fala Talks. Stay tuned for part two of our Fiji special.